Are blockchain salaries high? I get to ask this question a lot. If you look around, there's kind of this impression, oh, blockchain uh, engineers are in such high demand that companies are paying really high salaries. Therefore, the correct st career strategy is to study something like Solidity, uh, get a certificate, get hired, and get a massive salary bump. Uh, blockchain is not the first industry that this happened to. Something similar happened with machine learning about, I want to say, three years ago, I'd, I'd say. And it, it, there's always this industry ready to capitalize on these memes on the internet that say, if you do this, you're going to make a lot of money. I think it's just some variation of, uh, oh, if you learn how to trade stocks, let me sell you my course. If you learn how to drop ship on Amazon, you can make money. Let me sh sell you my course. And I really don't, I mean, I talk to hiring managers for Solidity regularly. I don't think that you can get a high paying job in Solidity that easily. So first of all, let's talk about why the Solidity salaries are high, or even if they are even high in the first place. And you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. You have to remember that there are several things that drive a developer's salary. One is their location, and two is how senior they are, and three is what kind of companies have they worked at. So obviously, if you work at a brand name company, you're going to earn more than a non-brand name company. And it's generally true that the longer you are in industry, uh, the more experience you have and the more companies are going to pay. Uh, that I, I've definitely seen some 10-year engineers who underperform two-year engineers, but on average, a person with more experience has had more opportunities to learn from mistakes, and they can be a more effective contributor to the team. And then there is location. Obviously, people in Silicon Valley, or uh, rather the Bay Area and New York City, earn more than other parts of America and the rest of the world. So how does this correlate to blockchain? Well, let's first of all talk about location. If you think of the top blockchain companies, almost all of them are concentrated in the US. And that means that they can afford to pay more and they have better funding. So you can't think, okay, well, I live in some part of South or Southeast Asia. Now, if I study blockchain, I'm suddenly gonna have access to these large salaries. It doesn't work like that because the time zone is too far away and visas are hard to get. Yes, a lot of blockchain jobs are remote, but people generally feel more comfortable hiring someone who they can have regular meetings with because you know the communication aspect of work is important. And if you look, so that's talking about location. Now let's talk about seniority. There are almost no jobs out there that say, hey, if you have zero years of experience, like your first real job is a solidity job, we want to hire you. That's incredibly uncommon. And if you find it, you're not going to get paid very much. Companies generally want to see if you're going to be writing code that goes into smart contracts, which is generally immutable, very consequential if you make a mistake and could have a security or gas efficiency issue. They want to know that you know how to write production grade code and that you know how to debug it and write clean code. And that is, I'm not saying that you cannot learn how to do that if Solidity is your first job, but it's a much, much bigger hill to climb. And not only do you have to actually learn how to write production grade code, you have to prove to the employer that you write production grade code. And those are two different things. Part of the job application process, one is actually having the skill for the job, and two is convincing the potential employer that you actually have the skills. Because I've seen resumes where someone puts, oh yeah, I know JavaScript, I have experience writing front-end app, and another person writes, I know JavaScript, I have experience writing front-end apps. But one guy barely knows how to do it, and the other guy knows every single detail of the, rea well, not every single detail, but it knows very thoroughly a lot of the front-end frameworks and can debug very non-trivial issues and knows, knows how to optimize the website to run fast and be more modular so it can be upgraded more easily. But both of them say, hey, um, I know JavaScript and I can build front-end apps. So one guy is really underselling himself and that could be costing him a potentially lucrative career. So when you come in with no experience, you already have this red light above your head which says this person probably doesn't know how to write production grade code. Uh, this person doesn't have experience working on an engineering team, so we don't want to trust him with a uh, working on the smart contracts, which are often the most critical parts of the stack. Again, I'm not saying that it can't be done, and people have done it, but that's the exception and not the norm. And these people, one, are very, very passionate about the subject, so they're able to keep studying every gap in their knowledge until uh, they get to where they need to be. And two, oftentimes they have a lucky connection with someone who's going to give them a chance so that they can get out of that um, stigma of having the, this is my first time doing a real programming job. And uh, three, I mean, they have the privilege of spending more time studying than the average person does. 
So that's uh, when it comes to years of experience. It's pretty hard to get a blockchain job with working on like smart contracts or blockchain protocols or as a security auditor with less than three years of experience. Now, as a separate topic, which I'll do as a different video later, you can still work in Web3 doing traditional Web2 jobs, and you might be able to get that with relatively little experience. But what most people have in mind when they're talking about Web3 jobs is, oh, I want to work on smart contracts or be an auditor or work on the protocol. It's really, really, really hard to get that if this is your first uh, job. And it's not gonna be a process of a few months. It's gonna be over the course of a year and more. Okay, now let's talk about um, salaries. Are they high? Now you people say, oh look, a Solidity developer makes $150,000 a year or whatever. Therefore, uh, studying Solidity is the cause of their high salary. Well, like I said, the people who actually get these jobs, not just the people who call themselves blockchain engineers, but the people who actually get employed as blockchain engineers, they already have six-figure salaries. So when you switch jobs, generally you'll get a 10% bump in a reasonable economy. And if you're already making $130,000, then it's not unrealistic to make $150,000 in your next job. Especially, let's say you're a front-end engineer and you're making $120,000 a year. And you go to the next company and say, hey, I can do good front end work and I can also write smart contracts. Uh, you should hire me. And they think, wow, we get two for the price of one. I mean, to be fair, we should pay this person $240,000, but since he's going to accept $160,000, this is a good deal for us. So therefore, we have a Solidity engineer making $160,000 a year. But in reality, Solidity is not the reason the salary is high. It's because it's, Solidity is almost always combined with another skill. So you can get jobs doing Solidity only, but they are few and far between, and it's more competitive. There are a lot of people studying blockchain right now with the intent of getting a job as a smart contract engineer. Uh, I have some open roles right now in Web3, and I get tons of applicants to those. I barely even have time to look at all of them, and I'd say, just looking at it quickly, at least 50% of them are hopelessly underqualified. And, you know, which is, I'm not, I don't mean that in like a, like a demeaning way, it's just, it's true. And you, your application needs to really stand out above all of the noise that comes in because anyone can go to Udemy and get a certificate. By the way, I'm a Udemy instructor, so take my courses linked below. They won't get you a job, but they'll make you a better programmer. So um, <laughs> the if your application looks like everybody else's, you're not going to get the job. There's When there's a job, there's dozens of applicants and only one person gets it. That's just how it works. So how does that work? It means... One, if you have more experience than other people, you already stand out more. Two, if you've done things that other people haven't, you've gone above and beyond just getting your online certificate so that you've done stuff. Well, I'll actually talk about other things you can do to make your job application stand out in a later video. But the point is, if your application looks like everybody else and you have the same cover letter, you're going to get the same results, which is rejection. All of these factors make it tough to get a Web3 job where you're actually working on the tech that is considered cool. I don't mean this to deter you. Um, if you're passionate about it, you should do it anyway. I have other videos about good reasons to study Web3 besides looking for a bigger salary. I think there's some very good reasons. But if your motivation is salary, I don't recommend going the blockchain route. The tried and true way to getting a higher salary uh, nowadays is to get really good at data structures and algorithm questions and get a job at a good company. Um, 80% of people who apply there are not going to pass the interview. People don't do well on data structures and algorithms questions because they're uh, not fun to practice. But if you're willing to do it, your application is going to stand out. Well, I mean, maybe it's a, it could be a little bit harder to get your foot in the door if you don't already have a brand name on your resume. But what you can do is go to the recruiter and say, hey, um, I've been really practicing this stuff. You should give me a chance. And that will kind of get you around all of this big resume pile. And the recruiters are paid a bonus generally if they hire you. I'm not talking about a general recruiter. I'm talking about a recruiter specifically at the company you're trying to work at. And so they'll get a bonus if they hire you. And if you convince them, hey, look, look at my lead code stats. Look at my hacker rank stats. Look at what I've done on Algo Expert. Trust me, I'm not wasting your time. Then they'll be like, okay, here you go. Let, why don't you apply for this junior role? And then if you've practiced well for your interviews, you'll get it. Boom, six figures right there. Now, if you're overseas, that's a little trickier. Uh, I'm going to create a separate video for that. But blockchain will generally only help your salary. Okay, I mean, let me put it this way. Solidity or other related skills can make a good salary better. 
by itself, it's not going to get you from a salary you're not happy with to those shiny salaries. So you need to think about what does the entirety of my application look like? Is this something that's going to stand out? Because if it's only Solidity, it's going to be tough. Now, if you want to go the only Solidity route, it is possible, but you're going to have to have something really exceptional, which means you do you know far more than just how to make ERC-20 and ERC-721s. You know down to the last detail how the EVM works. You can uh, solve all of the security hacks on um, damn vulnerable DeFi and um, Ethernet. What else? You know how DeFi protocols work. Uh, you have a good understanding of how the consensus algorithms work on the blockchain. So if you really have genuine expertise in the topic, then that by itself can get you a job. But it takes a long time to build up genuine expertise. Now, you can build it pretty fast if you have the time and you're determined and you have, uh, you're have you surrounded by good people and you have good guidance and so on, but it still takes time. There's no shortcut to it. So think about it carefully before you, oh, I want to study, um, I'm going to take some course to learn solidity and then get a high paying job. It's probably a dead end. That's just the reality of the situation. Make, if you're going to study it uh, for the purpose of salary, you should consider the alternative. Should I just study algorithms instead? Because that's a lot safe. That's a lot safer choice to getting a high uh, salary. Uh, if you are already having a, if you already have a six-figure salary at an established job, then the barrier to entry for you to get a um, more Web three kind of a job is not that high because the companies already trust you to be a good software engineer. But if you're starting from a lot less experience, it's a lot tougher. Okay. So I think I've covered most of the points. There's a few tail ends that I didn't clean up. I'll leave for a later video, but I've had this uh, conversation over a few video calls already, and I kind of wish that I had recorded those video calls so that they could be shared with you. But this is just summarizing advice that I've given many times to different people. So good luck.